Cool. Uh, before I start, can I get a show of hands? Uh, does anyone here work at startups? Okay. Does anybody here own startups? Like, are you guys founders? Okay, cool. <laughs> nice. So I think, um, so uh, I'm Vish. Uh, so I am the co-founder and CTO of Split. Um, we are a travel financing startup, which means we let you pay for your trips in installments, right? So how we do this is we become a payment, payment platform. We become a, a place where, you know, we, we get integrated on travel websites at their checkout page and you can choose to pay and split and split it in installments. Um, but what I'm here to talk about is a, is a problem that's very personal to me. Uh, so I've worked across multiple startups in many countries, in India, in the US, Malaysia, and now in, in Singapore as well. And, and I've worked in small companies and rather large companies as well. Small in the sense that less than 10 employees. I was one of the first few employees and then and also startups where there are 200 plus employees spread across multiple countries. But one problem remains constant, and this is also personal to me, is firefighting. And I'm sure you must have heard this term or faced it yourself. There are more often times where you feel like, why am I doing the same thing? Why am I just not growing? Why am I lagging behind? And five, you, you know when you're firefighting when, you know, when your product team is, churn, is asking you to build features at such a fast rate, maybe one release a week, and then you have a huge backlog of bugs you know, that you need to fix. Or if you're always trying to figure out hacky solutions for problems, right? Just fix it really fast, let's get it out, and then do it later. I guess this sort of a mindset in startups has been sort of vicious in a way that things don't get built properly. But on the other hand, we see startups like, I mean, X startups like Airbnb, WhatsApp, they always seem to be way ahead of the curve, you know? They're always building amazing features that works across platform, across communities, across countries as well. How do they do it, right? Um, so what I'm here to do is actually sort of go through my experience of why uh, firefighting happens and how we can sort of avoid it in the first place. And then again, as me running a start of my own, I do not want to deal with any of these problems, right? So, firefighting, how do we stop it? I think the first question to ask is, do we firefight at split? Touch wood, we don't, so far. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so far. And the way we are able to do it is by two core philosophies that we have. First one is be lean. Uh, very unlike the lunch that I had today, but yes, <laughs> be lean. Be lean in two ways, right? Be lean in your code and be lean in hiring. Let's talk about code, right? Whenever we write anything in Split or build anything in Split, we do not ever want it to come and bite our ass, ever, as much as we try. We want to engineer things that autopilots on its own, right? An example I'd like to share is actually WhatsApp. So just before that acquisition, WhatsApp had 16 employees. That is it. And they were probably in the top 10 of every app store in every country for a long, long time. How is it that they're able to achieve something like this with such a small team, right? So that leads me into hiring, right? It is actually very easy for startups. Like, look, you've gotten your seed round, let's say a million dollars or so. Boom, you get an office here in WeWork, you hire 10 engineers who are just onboarded, and then and you're expecting things to grow really fast and really like explosively, right? But that's actually not gonna happen. So as founders, you, you've done your due diligence and figuring out what the product and what the experience is going to be. You get one person on board and it probably takes them about a month to kind of get, your, get their mindset tuning and work as one single unit. Now imagine getting 10 people in one shot. How are you gonna convince them of your vision Yes, maybe they're convinced at an overall scale, but can you work together as a unit is the question. Something to think about. It's easier said than done, but that's something that we try really hard at Split to do, making sure that you're on the same page. We're all thinking as one unit rather than having like confused conversation, meeting after meeting. That's never going to happen, right? 
And the second thing is, I know this is going to be a very cliche topic. Um, stay true to your vision of your company and never find shortcuts. Now, again, when I said easier said than done, your vision, uh, for, for example, Split's vision is no travel will be made uh, impossible because of the upfront cost, right? If $1,000 is a huge upfront cost for you, we want to stop that for you to be able to travel, right? This is our actual vision. Now, the motivations of a startup could be very different, right? So let's say uh, you find out that there's a company in the US that's doing something and you feel like, hey, the same product could be applied in Singapore and there's a huge market, right? So your motivations could probably be that, I want to make that money, I want to make that exit. Now, if you go with this mindset, you're never going to be building a very customer-focused product. You're never going to know what the actual problems are. Sure, you can do your user research, hire five product managers to do it, but then your, your measure of success is always going to be GMV, right? So that's bad. So the key is always stay true to your vision of whatever that might be in, in your case, right? Uh, and second, never find shortcuts. Shortcuts always bite you back in the ass. <laughs> I, I don't want to elaborate more on this, this is, makes sense, right? Um, so yeah, anyway, um, speaking of hiring, we are hiring at Split. If you would be interested, you can come talk to me later. But enough of me, I'm gonna pass on uh, Mike to Marsha. He's a full stack engineer at Split, and he's gonna talk to you about experience of working at Split, working at startups, and how what it means to be here. Just on here. Um, hi, um, my name is Marsha. So um, maybe some self-introduction. So I'm a full stack developer for about three years of working experience. So um, for my development experience, I've been bouncing between startups, working for dev house, projects after projects. Then I got an opportunity to work in a big MNC, um, called, yeah, German MNC called SAP. So I experienced startups and MNC structured and unstructured or less structured companies before. So I will, I'm trying to convince you guys then uh, why you should join startups rather than a very structured company like the banks, uh, big companies. I know they pay well. Full stack developer, you go out now, $5,000 a month, no problem. But why you should join a startup? So um, the main gist of it is there's cost for everything. So um, first, there's cost on monetary gains. Second is the growth and opportunity. Booking for a big MNC, they are structured, got uh, rules and regulation, very little room for creativity. But working for a startup, you got more room to explore your ideas, to grow, to be creative. And um, in some sense, for speed, there's no office politics in some sense. So um, yeah, split adopts uh, 80 to 20% rule. 80% of the time we do what we are hired to do. 20% uh, of the time we can do whatever you want to do. So for me, my 20% of the time, I choose to do business development. So I was part of developing a pet project for loans for travel agents, like at People's Park. Eh? So ongoing project. It's fun. It's like I'm a first-time developer, but I get to be a mini PM to do BD. That's cool, man. You can't get kind of opportunity in MNCs. So this is it. So. Yeah, um, yeah, um, yeah, so uh, to reiterate, uh, Split is hiring. Uh, we are all Node.js based. So uh, we are at the corner talking about Node.js. If any of you guys are Node.js developers, come talk to me. I'm, I will be great to learn from you guys. So uh, chat with me later. Okay. Thank you. So the question was, what do you guys do on a day-to-day -day basis that reduces the rush in development, right? So um, we've been active for about a year, and uh, the one thing that, okay, again, back to core principles, is that we, we follow the general principle of you know sprints, 
uh, making sure everything is clean before it goes out. We user test. Um, the golden rule is number six. Talk to six people. If a majority likes it, go adopt these product principles. But at the core, if even one person says that, hey, uh, this is some, not something that I'd use and not a widespread experience, we will not use it. Um, for example, a um, couple of days ago, we needed to push a release out, uh, which does a lot of new things. Uh, but it just it was a little bit slow. It took a two second delay, and we took uh, a conscious choice. We will not push it until we figure out why there's this delay. So the end consumer matters the most. Like if you look at companies like uh, say Apple, for example, of late they have been doing stuff startupy. Uh, but then more often than not, when they release a product, it is generally widespread and it works. They do a lot of testing. Um, they do a lot of research, and then it, they take their time to do it. So that's the thing, right? So our product has evolved over a year. It is not what it is before, but we also don't uh, follow the you know move fast and break things principle. We don't want to break things. We want to just move fast. Adding on to that, he by the way, test script, automate the test scripts. It doesn't pass. Don't push it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, the question is, so when you say that you don't firefight, right, it's kind of, uh, okay, so, so in any project there's always like this trifecta or whatever you want to call it, of like feature, scope, um, quality, and time, and there's a natural tension. So at different points, whether it's your own fault or not, one goes into a crunch mode. And yeah. And then you wind up firefighting. That's what happens. So how do you like bring the balance back? Because right. that, that's the only way, right? Absolutely. I think we are fortunate at this time that most of the things that we want to do already is perfected in some way. For example, right? An API call, making an API call, or a queue, uh, your queue stack. Three years ago, like RabbitMQ was not as good, right? Today it's really good. Making an API is super easy. Uh, let's say things like a server crash, for example. It used to be a thing of the past. You have auto scaling, your EC2 goes down. But now put everything on Lambda and it, it works fine. So I think adopting scalable technologies is um, what I'd recommend. And there is this core reason why this happens. Because again, staying lean, we are a three member team right now. Now, if we do something that could potentially break, I don't want to wake up at 2 AM and then fix something. Right? So there is a sort of need to make sure we cover our track wherever we go and make sure this doesn't happen. And I don't know if I'm expressing this correctly, is that when in your mind you feel like you know, things are going to go break, things are going to break, and you, this is going to happen, it kind of reinforces your brain to figure out what could possibly go wrong and fix it. But having said that, it is quite possible that things uh, will break and you will have to firefight at certain points. But let's say if you're mostly not firefighting, that's a very good thing. Does that make sense? Yeah. Uh, 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 at the end of the day, Docker, all your code. So if there's a problem, <laughs> we start off the whole image, we are done. You can go to sleep. And automate that, that process. So you don't even need to wake up. Huh? Yeah. Okay. Cool. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah.